Hey, it's Spencer, and today we are going to be painting up this Necron Overlord, and it's going to be all grimy and rusty and horrible. So the first thing we've done is we've primed it in black and then given it a coat all over with Vallejo Metal Colour Dual Aluminium. These are some of the nicest metallic paints you can get. They leave a really nice finish. Uh, yeah, really high recommend. And then for the actual colours of the armour, we're going to use contrast paints and washes from Games Workshop. So first thing we're going to use is Fire Slayer Flash from Games Workshop. This is one of the contrast paints. I'm going to use this to paint in all of the main armour parts of the model. So like the leg, like bits around the leg, the bits around the arms, the chest, uh, like the rib cage sort of bits, all of those. Then we're going to wash any recesses with Norn Oil. This just helps to bring out some definition in this early stage. And then for any gold areas, we're going to use snake bite leather. No, we're not. We're going to use skeleton hoard, and we're going to paint this over any of the um, gold areas. We're just going to slap it on. If you go a little bit hard, then you can just pull it off with your brush and apply it to a different area of the model. For any of like the black accent parts, so this is like the hip bone bits, the shoulder joints, the weapon casings, we're going to use black templar. Now you can skip this step because we do it again later on anyway, but we're going to paint in all the glowy bits in black. So I just thought I'd include it because in case you were wondering how those got black. So yeah, um, you can skip this bit. Just do it later on in the video when I show you when to do it. So we're going to coat the whole model with MIG Streak and Grime. Um, the MIG one is more brown, whereas the AK Interactive one is more like an olive green. So I prefer the MIG one for this uh, effect. If you've got the AK one, you can use it. It's just obviously going to look different in the end. So um, yeah, for this, we're giving the model a coat with it all over through the airbrush. And then we're going to take a cotton bud and we're going to soak it in enamel thinner. Um, and then we're going to roll that across the model. What that's going to do is reduce the grime down on the model so that we're just left with the residue. You will leave, it will leave some like pooling over the top. Oh, his head fell off. Oops. Um, but then what we're going to do is we're going to come in with a clean cotton bud and we're just going to mop up that excess that's sitting on top of the model. So we just left with a nice grimy residue, a bit of grime in the recesses, but it's not like completely like splashed on all over the place now. Still getting those nice colours through from what we've done already done. So here we're going to use Troll Slayer Orange and we're going to apply that over the top of the um, the washes we've just done with the enamel thinner and that's going to make the troll set orange beat up and leave like a cool beading effect on the model. After that it's dark rust deposits from AK Interactive. This dries as like a nice matte finish which is really cool and contrasts nicely with the really bright orange of the, um, of the troll set orange that we've just done. From here, we're going to use some MIG Dark Streaking Grime, and this is more of like a like a dark green. Um, and we're just going to add some splashes to the model to add some variation to the grime. Um, and then from there, we're going to take a cotton bud, and we're just going to roll it across that grime just to remove some of it, because we don't want to really colorize the, the model with that grime. It's just to add some you know variation to it. Now I'm making up an, a black oil wash here. If you've got like a black enamel wash pre-made, then you can just use that. But um, yeah, I'm just using a cheap black oil paint here and some enamel thinner. Um, we're going to put it into one of these little dishes and mix it up until it gets like a wash consistency. So you don't have to dilute the whole block of oil that you put in there, just until it's like a, a thin wash really. And what we're going to do with that then is run it across basically any area of the model where we want extra definition. So like his little skirt thing here, the bit on his chest, um, his cape especially, that's going to bring out a lot of definition in there. And it's going to look really good. just want to take a moment to say thank you very much to all my Patreons. Uh, it really helps to support the channel and what I do. Um, I wouldn't be able to do this without your support. And yeah, I just really appreciate it. If you've not joined my Patreon, um, I just want to say thank you to all, you, all the subscribers as well because your support means everything too. Thank you. At this point, we're going to roll a cotton bud across the model to remove any excess grime. And then we're going to use the nearlock oxide and just kind of 
dab this across like any areas where you want to add some verdigris to the model because the model is still wet with the uh, enamel thinner and this is an acrylic based paint so uh, sorry this is a water based paint so water based paints and uh, enamel based paints or oil based paints they don't mix very well so you'll end up with this beading which is like we had with the troll slow orange it means you can end up with a really cool verdigris effect so I've dried the model off here with the hairdryer, and then we're going to repaint those bits in black, which I painted earlier. So that's like the scythe and any of the orbs. Then we're going to base, so we're using Vallejo Thick European Mud. This is really nice, um, it's got a really nice texture and it acts as an adhesive when we put any like debris in it. So I'm going to use some little scale modeling bricks and some barbed wire, like so. And then we're going to use some dark streak and grime from MIG. I'm just going to um, apply a bit of that to the, the bricks and to the barbed wire, just to add some like grime on there already. And then for the really fun part, we're going to load up a brush and then use an airbrush to spatter that loaded brush all across the bottom of the model. I'm using the dark streak and grime. I'm using Kursk soil. Um, and you kind of want to like, like make it like a fine mist so that it's like a really fine like dirt that sprays up the model. And you can do that by having the brush quite close to the airbrush where you spray it out. After you've done that, we're going to paint up the orbs in white. So you can use any white really, uh, just a nice good solid coat of it. Um, I'm using titanium white ink here by Liquitex, but you can use anything. Then we use the same ink and we're going to spray the, um, well, I'm going to do these little circle things on the blade. I'm going to leave some um, like black in between them so it creates like some nice contrast when we get onto the next stage. And then we're also going to use this white ink to um, make a halo effect around any of those orbs, which is going to help with the next step where we we tint the white ink and create our, our look of you know the glowy phase blades. So here I'm using a ink. So you can use whatever color you want to do this. And the best way is to either buy a contrast paint or a transparent ink. So this is like a, a, obviously a very lime green transparent ink from Liquitex, um, but you can use anything. So like uh, if you wanted to red, you could use like the Blood Angels red contrast paint from Games Workshop. That works great. Uh, or if you wanted like a turquoise color, you could use Athematic Blue. Uh, that also works really nice. And we're basically using a thin coat of this to filter over every area where we've just done the halo and the orbs, you know, painted in white um, and the, the phase blades as well. After that, the last step to do um, on the phase blades, they have these channels in them, um, they're like I don't really know, but they're a bit like panels anyway, so you can panel line them with black wash. So I'm using the oil wash we made earlier, or if you've got enamel wash, you can use that. Just touch it to it and fill those panel lines. And the last step is to paint the base room black. There we have it. Thank you very much for watching. I uh, really appreciate you taking the time out of your day to sit here and watch a video by little old me. Uh, if you did like the video, please like it and subscribe to the channel. It really helps me to continue doing what I'm doing. Um, if you want to support the channel even further, you could join my Patreon where you get things like early access to these videos. You get the unedited footage. You can watch it start to finish with all the little mishaps that go along along the way. Um, you also get things like uh, a monthly giveaway for minis. Um, there's there's all sorts really. Um, you can get your name in the credits. You can even sign up for one-on-one -on -one tuition if you really want to. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video anyway. So thank you very much for watching guys and I'll see you next time. Bye.